try to address them as we go along just to help keep things smooth ish so and as we get into game yeah Okay, the spectator delay is over, and we are finally getting in-game, so as the lanes begin to fall out, we can look at starting items and things like that. Soon as everyone gets loaded in, it appears that there might be potentially an issue with the spectate server, but at this point, I guess we will just have to wait and see. Okay, items are starting to come in, as there does appear to have been a... Yes, there was a slight issue with the Spectex server, but those were quickly <laughs> taken care of. Right, mysteriously. But anyways, um, pretty conventional starts from both sides. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Thresh is going with the Ancient Coin this, which, this time around, which is a very interesting start compared to most conventional support starts. With Thresh, you do want to have that initial sustain for your lane partner. Granted that the coin does help with the gold generation a little bit more and your own personal sustain, but as a support you do need to put a lot of emphasis on keeping your carry health, healthy and safe. And Thresh does have most of that self, uh, does have that peel for his carry, but he does not have any ways of sustain like the Alistair does. So going for the shield might have been a better option in this situation. However, with um, Alistair also going with the support item and health pots with the ward nothing too sustain should be balanced out pretty far he does not have a whole lot of mana regen so we will see how things fold out nothing too crazy no shenanigans no invades or anything just patiently waiting for that 155 mark for jungle camps to start and then we can get into the lighting phase Jungle camps have now spawned, and Lightning Face is now technically underway. Evelyn's parting at the Gromps, or at the Krugs, excuse me, going for that Gift of Heavy Hands, giving them the stun on every fifth auto attack, helping with the jungle clear. And with Ringar starting at Gromp, I'm a, yes, he did use Smite, giving him the poison armor, giving him the extra regen, and Dot as he never takes damage from the jungle camps, helping with his clear speed, and they do both seem to be starting their buffs as well. And things appearing to normalize in the lane. Nothing 
crazy happening just yet. But with that Tristana, we definitely need to see how that E will pop out. I mean, we'll start going. A lot of pressure being put down onto the Zed. A lot of good poke coming out of the Lux. Some few exchanges going out in favor of the favor of the Fiora, a lot of damage onto the Akali, and it looks like that she's popped all of her health pots, she might be in a bit of a bad situation, and the Rengar also taking low from the jungle camps. Those buffs do hurt a lot now with some of the smart changes that have come out, along with the overall heart, well, we have to put that on holo, nice WQ combo coming out of the Alistair, but not a whole lot comes out of it, and also Evelyn showing up in mid, but nothing comes out of that as well, but it does look like the Akali might fall, she throws down the Shroud and taking damage, but she will turn it around and get the first blood, but the Ignite is ticking and she's sitting in front of minions, she might go down, holding on with just a tiny sliver of health, so very well played by the Akali in this situ situation. Looks like Evelyn might be taking out the Rift Crab, Rift Scuttler, as he's been giving some nice vision. But oh, the Zed might be in a bit of a tough spot here. As Lux and Rengar closing in with the Flash, Flashy Flash Bola, and we will go down to the Lux. A WQ combo coming out of the Alistair again. Some very nice play coming out of the Exhaust goes down onto the Graves, pops the heal. But with the Evelyn coming in on a return gang, getting a double kill, taking out both the Rengar and the Lux. Very well played, and it does look very. Well, and Graves is forced back off, but they look, they can land a hook, and he does, and Tristana does go down, but he might try, but the Alistair might try to get a WQ combo off, but it does not go through, and double kill for Graves. So in light of all that, 300 gold lead for the red team at the moment. And it does look like the snowball is going really well for them in different aspects for both of the teams. Two kills onto the Evelyn, meaning that she will have a lot of presence and a lot of gold to make these ganks happen. But at the same time, with a double kill onto the Graves, he might be able to go back and actually pick up a... Well, it's a little early for a BF sword, but he does pick up a pickaxe, one of them, and boots, and a few health potions as well to help with the sustain. So that will be one of the major key ingredients for that Infinity Edge, which will really help a lot in terms of his DPS. They'll be able to throw out in these fights once they start happening. And it looks like the Zed might be trying to make a move in mid. I saw the shadow going out, but with the camera we will not see, so I guess not that much happened out of it. Looking at... CS tends to be a little even, except for in the top lane where the Fiora has a 20 CS advantage onto the Akali. Akali is not farming very well, but 3-6 Akali is a little, does have a hard time in landing phase, but when she hits 6 she will have that shadow rush. Or, Exactly what it is called, but she will have that shadow. She will have that level six where she can run, or where she can dash really quickly and do a lot of burst damage. So we will see. But the Fiora will also have a lot of damage coming up. So she will try to put some damage onto the turret as well. But she throws down the shroud, it takes a lot of turret shots, and she will go. And the Fiora will go down, giving yet another kill for the Akali. And a few kills onto Akali is not something that you really want to have going into like mid and late game, helping. Build some of these really core items that will make Akali into this late game monster. And that is something that the red team really does not need want to deal with at this point. So we'll see how that works, how that turns out for them. Not a whole lot of action going out. We do have Ringar or Evelyn, see, excuse me, um, sitting in mid lane, trying to make a gank happen, but it looks like the Lux is not wanting to go aggressive in on the Zed. The Zed is about to hit level six. But it does look like she's got pushed up far enough and a lot of damage coming down. But will they be able to secure the kill? The Chilling Smite does go down, and indeed they do secure the kill for the Zed. So yet another Snowball -y champion getting another one of these Snowball -y assassins picking up another kill. And this could be bad for Red Team. So not a whole lot else going down either, just a little bit of back and forth pushing in bottom lane. Rengar showing up in mid just to help keep the wave controlled and not not constantly pushing up in mid. A few wards down, so nice to keep tabs on the Rengar, but some deeper, maybe even some pinks to help keep Aquas on the hunts once he does hit level 6, but we do have a fight going out in top lane, but Akali will throw down the Shroud and manage to get away, and as we say that, Akali, I mean, Evelyn, excuse me, is making another play, and trying to make another play, the Agony's Embraces drop the Exhaust, goes down onto the Graves, and they might be able to, no, the damage is not enough, but the Rengar is there for the counter gank, something might come out of that, but Fiora does drop the Blade Waltz and kill, and does get a solo kill onto the Akali, 
and the death mark is dropped as well, putting a lot of damage onto the Flux, and she looks a little lost, not sure what to do. And the Ignite goes down, she pops Barrier, and the Zed will be able to secure that kill, so well played on him. Solo kills happening all over the map. And with the Headbutt out of trying to knock the Grazer away, Alistair trying to peel for his carry, but he might end up paying for it. And as we say that, a lot of action going down here. Evelyn and Ringar fighting in the jungle, so it looks like they will walk away and nothing will happen. A few MIA pings called out from top lane, but with both of them backing up, you can see Evelyn runs into the Ringar once again and she might be able to pick him off. Yes, she does. So 3-0 and o for the Evelyn. Very well played and making very well very well, very good progress, considering how tough of a time Evelyn tends to have in these early jungle, with her lack of sustain, honestly. But since, with the few recent changes, making her E apply on hit like life steal and things like that. Going for the blue steal, but the Lux does catch wind of it, trying to get them off due to the warding they have, but, and Evelyn cut in a very bad spot, so another kill for the Graves. Not the smartest of plays, I can kind of see why. She wanted to do that and press the advantage, but they probably they knew that that would happen, so they did have wards there to keep the Evelyn invades from happening. So well played by the red team, keeping up their vision. And Zed just barely dodging the light binding, preventing a lot of damage. So things do tend to be looking really well for the mid lane for the blue team with a nice 20, 10, 20 CS, sorry, 20 CS advantage and a kill advantage as well for the Zed. So things will be looking very good for them, picking up the Brutalizer and the Vampiric Scepter, giving them a lot of sustain in the lane and a lot of penetration and attack damage as well. And as we look in bottom lane at the CS totals, as we do approach the 10 minute mark, and we might have to put that on hold, as Ringard does appear to be looking for a gank, his on the hunt is not up yet, but if Zed does get a little too close for the push, but he does not, he goes ahead and goes in on the Lux, popping the death mark, and he does get a kill, and he might be able to get away from this, jumps back to the death, to the death mark shadow, and will dodge the, dodge the bolus strike as well, so very well played by the Zed getting away from that, and dodging the jungler in the process, but top lane does not appear to be going too well, and the Blade Watts goes down, and another solo kill for the Fiora, and things are not looking too good for top lane. So Evelyn might be wanting to divert some pressure onto the top lane to try and balance things out. And once again, Ringar is sitting around trying to defend mid, but he's going a little low. The Zed is becoming a big problem. The box is dropped, and Zed goes really low. The collateral damage is thrown down onto the Trisana, dealing a lot of damage, forcing her to rocket jump away. And so only one kill coming out of that, but with Tristana Chunk Low, it doesn't look like they might be able to make a whole lot go a whole lot happen out of that gank. And Tristana might be in a bit of some trouble if the buckshot does go down and it connects. One more auto will do it, a flash for it. So Grave securing yet another kill for an O for him already. And he might be in a bit of a spot, but with the three people roaming down, they might be able to make something happen. Evelyn picking up her fifth kill of the game. Zed roaming down just to secure the kill, but he does not pick up the assist for his troubles. Lux might want to be careful. Th Living Shadow goes down, but she does have the backup of the Ringar. Evelyn spotted out, so she does know something is here. Ringar did pop his on the hunt, it appears, or he does have it on cooldown. And Top once again left on an island, really struggling against this Fiora. She is down um, over 50 CS at this point. This is, this is a really bad issue, but the Chilling Smite and the On the Hunt is popped, but it does not work, and it looks like the Ringar will be in a bit of a bomb, but as the stealth does go through, he might be able to juke it, but that time is quickly running out, and he will might be able to get away with this. No, the WQ combo does go through. He does pop the W, trying to get some more health sustain, and the Fiora picks up another kill in the meantime, but Evelyn picking up her sixth kill of the game. Very well, jo very well done by her. At this point, Evelyn might want, to, might want to consider picking up maybe a tank item to help support the Alistair in being that tanky frontliner because Evelyn does have to get in rather close. So picking up a Randuins or something like that at this point to help deal with the Fed Graves would be a very smart option at this time, and we'll see if she does go through with that. Because that Graves that Graves and the Fiora also is becoming is starting to become a major issue for the blue will become a major issue for the blue team. In just a couple of minutes as we do start to see 
some team fights breaking out, and with Fiora's, Fiora might be a bit of an issue for Tristana forced to rocket jump away. And at this point, we'll just see which snow, uh, which snowball is stronger at this point. With the Fed Zed and the Fed, the Fed Zed and the Fed Evelyn, will it be enough to take out the Graves and the Fiora as well? Fiora now picking up that TM, picking up the TMI. Helping with her wave clear a lot, so they will have to put a lot of attention towards her as she will begin that split, I mean, very strong split push combined with the increased damage that they gave a couple patches ago to the Blade Waltz. Might need to be more than one champion. So Tristana also falling back. I'm not exactly sure how much gold she's sitting on at the moment, but with only only a BF sword compared to Graves, all three components of the Infinity Edge including boots is a bit of a disadvantage and they may not want to go aggressive but as we say that Apolly is found in trouble once again and so is the Evelyn but she does manage to dodge the binding so she will be okay and the, El and the Akali is forced to run away and maybe back but with Rengar roaming up towards top might be wanting to get some support but they might back off just to clear off the pink ward the bolo strike does connect on the Evelyn and some damage coming out from the Lucent Singularity Holly dropped the shroud, and here comes in. A... Sorry. Uh, uh, Kali does pick up a kill onto the Rengar. The death mark is dropped onto the Lux, and Zed will pick up a kill. But he does appear to be in a bit of a bad spot as Fior is is uh, closing in rather quickly. But with the Kali dropping down the Q and the and the rush, we'll get a double kill. This uh, this Fior is become is quickly becoming a major issue for the blue team going 5 and 2 with 100 cs at the moment. And that will quickly be and that is an issue that they that the blue team really needs to address right now. Picking up Randuin's probably it does appear that the Evelyn will be building a does have appear to be a few components of the Randuin's with the giant spell and the cloth armor. And in addition to the ninja tabby might be a bit of an answer, but we'll see. Not entirely sure that will be enough to cut it. Thresh does throw down a hook, but it does get stopped by a minion. The WQ combo is not connected by the Alistair. The exhaust goes down onto the Tristana. The box is thrown down and popped on the Tristana. And this Evelyn is going in looking for the Graves, but does not find anything. And it looks like Lux might be roaming down or dropping a ward to either one of the two, trying to make something happen, but decides against it. So Evelyn staying around trying to make something happen but does get spotted out by the ward and the collateral damage will effectively blow up the Alistair. And with three people roaming down, the Evelyn is in a bit of a bad spot but it does connect double kill for the Graves. But Zed does manage to pick up and kill onto him on the backside of it. But flashing away as she pick as the Fiora picks another kill. Three people now in the bottom lane. And with the pressure being put down onto the tier 2 top, things are quickly getting out of hand. And it might not be enough for the blue team to control. Granted, they are. They are now down almost 4.5k. So this might be bad. Zed trying to make something happen. Just throwing out the shuriken, trying to dissuade them off the turret. But with Fiora quickly advancing onto the inhibitor turret, the Agony's Embrace is dropped as Suspenseful is trying to make something happen against the Fiora, but does only manage to push her off the turret. The W combo connects and drops down Death Bart onto the Ringar and picks up a kill. The Blood Waltz goes down and Fiora might be able to pick up a double kill. No, the Akali does manage to get away, but the Fiora dropped really low. It might be a bad idea for the Akali to pursue to pick up a kill, so nothing happens. Quick draw dropped by the Graves, trying to get some damage onto the Fior onto the Tristana. And a lot of action going down in the bottom lane. We're quickly becoming a powder cake and just waiting on that impetus to explode. And it could be very bad, and we'll see exactly what happens. This is tier two is about to fall. We'll see if the Thresh might be able to land a hook, but he decides against trying to attempt. And Akali is sent to try and put some pressure off of the top lane. At this point, the blue team is in a bit of a spot down five and a half thousand gold. With no with a no with no turrets taken yet, so a three turret advantage for the red team. 
despite this I mean despite the decent snowballing by the Z six and two as well as the Evelyn having six kills to her own it doesn't look really good for the blue team but we will have to see whenever they start grouping up they might be able to make something happen but with the team fight and the AoE coming out of the graves with the buckshot and the collateral damage not to mention the bindings coming out of Lux for support and the Fiora running around with the blade wall. Some oh, and Tristana might be want to be a little careful. She doesn't have anywhere to go and doesn't even get a chance to react as Ringar and Graves do manage to take her down with Ringar picking up the kill. Fiora looking to go aggressive, lands that second Q on the Akali. She drops the shroud. Doesn't look like she'll have anywhere to go either. No escape for her. Tries to dash and flash away. And I've been proven wrong, I suppose. So the Akali dropping a ward just to make sure that she's not getting flanked. But Fiora will manage to find a pink and get some gold for her troubles. Picking up 30 and might run into the Evelyn at this point. She might be able to pick up a blue buff off this as well. So this Fiora is quickly becoming a major, major issue for the blue for the blue team. And she might be trying to look and make something aggressive happen. With tier two with pressure being put down onto the tier two bottom lane as well. Blue team need to respond with their own pressure, but the death mark is dropped down onto the grace, but the exhaust is instantly dropped, and he has to jump back just to try and survive and throw the living shadow as well. So it's just not looking good. The tier one mid is also taken down, but the active brace is dropped on the two man. Not a bad flank by the Evelyn, but it, do they have the damage to follow it up? The Buster Shot does go down, as well as the Alistair Q, and Trisana will manage to get a kill. And the Thresh will go down as well. It's just a matter of who will get the kill. And the Tristana does pick up the double. But here comes in the Fiora and the Lux. She forced to dodge away. And the Lux does go down. But Fiora will pick up the kill. And the Alistair in a bit of a bind as, she, as he is surrounded by three people at the moment. With the Rengar the Lux. And the binding does go out. And he might be passed to pop the unbroke, unbreak. <sighs> a lot of action going down here. And making pings, for, and the red team is now making their first pings towards Dragon, an objective that has curiously gone un, relatively unnoticed. No dragons picked up by either team. With Baron spawning in five seconds for the first time, something they might be setting their eyes on that. They do have a very strong team, so they might be able to take it, but it would take at least an. He's taking out the jungle or something to not be able to contest it. A crushing ace would probably be the job that they are trying to make. They do, in fact, finally answer back with a turret two to them now. So as the tier ones top and mid are gone, Drop does drop the death mark, but he does have to drop away. He does manage. The Zed does get away, and pop from the death mark will be enough. The Chilinx might put that on the floor, try to get her, try to knock her away. But it is not enough to dissuade her. The Akali goes in trying to make something happen, but it will just continue to be a sacri sacrifice just to make sure that the rest of the team gets away. But with the Zed recalling so close, he might be a bit of a fine, but he does manage to get away. <sighs> so with Tristana and Alistair now are now making a push down onto the bottom lane as we're trying to make some, trying to create some pressure in some way and it's about all that they can do at this point because that fior is pretty much a monster at this point that's pretty much all that can do she dives it on the fior and drops the blade walls as well and gets the kill so fighting under tower and the set go down as well to the thresh box so a kill picked up by him, but they do manage to answer back with the tier 1 bottom turret. Tristana going in aggressive, Rocket jumps in, but is not enough as she's fighting in minions combined with the Drave, I mean with the Graves Burst, with the Phantom Dancer and the Infinity Edge. Together, a lot of damage coming out of him. So no real team fights coming out just yet, but it's coming to be very dangerous. And Alistair will pop the up, but it is not enough to save him with the damage reduction. The graves, I mean, the graves damage is just too strong for him to mitigate, but he will not get away. Lux picking up the blue buff, trying to help with her mana consumption, so she will be able to throw out those bindings. And now Dragon will be taken by the red team's first stack, which will continue to snowball them, giving them the extra percentage on their attack and AD, on their AD and their AP as well. The empowered Bola goes down, and the snap from Lux will go through, giving her her second kill of the game. 
so with the Akali down, they might be trying to make something happen. Evelyn Wade in the wings might be able to make a good flank with the Agony of Grace. Zed trying to wave clear. Bum does go down, and Ringar does manage to catch the Evelyn, but she just walk away from it. But now that they know that she is there, so they might want to be a little careful as they're rotating around into the enemy jungle. And we might be having our first true 5v5 team fight, but it does look like the red team is waiting in the death push, and they do catch the Alistair out, and he might go down, but they do not commit to him fully, but they do catch out the Zed. And Zed has forced to use his Yomu Ghost Blade to get away, but Lux picking up him with the snap once again. And Alistair going down once as well, once again as well, due to the immense damage coming out of the graves at the moment. Nine and four. Sitting on probably sitting on a lot of gold at the moment. May not be able. This damage is becoming is quickly escalating, and it's only going to get worse from here on out. So the blue team need to quickly come up with a solution. Looking to smart away, the red bucket does the what cost this. Ringard does pop on the hunt, trying to get out. The Evelyn damage is pretty strong, but the team as five do rotate around, trying to pick off the Evelyn, getting rid of all of their flank presence, which would be a very smart move, but they're going in for the dive. The smart does go down, and Fiora taking a lot of turret shots, but it is not enough to dissuade her, and she will pick up the kill on the Evelyn. And as we say, the two bottom also falls as well. Lux finding the Akali, but she does flash and dash and do some damage. Pops. Snap goes out, and Grace picking up yet another kill, his 10th of the game. Contributing to half the kill so far. Very scary stat line about that Graves. And it is quickly becoming what looks like to be an insurmountable lead now. An almost 9k gold lead, by, almost 10k actually, gold lead. But Fiora goes in completely fearless, dropping down the Alistair with the Blade Waltz, and walking away with about a quarter HP, and here goes in the Tristana, but quickly evaporates, but she does manage to pick up the Graves off the backswing of that. The Fox does go down, and Zed might need to be a little careful here. No, he'll just drop some taunts. He appears relatively confident in his abilities at this point. Not doing bad for himself at no by no means. Picking up the CDR boots, the Yomus, and the Blade of the Wood King. He does have the tools that he needs to snap off some people. Pick them off, rather. But at this point, it's quickly escalating to the point where he might not be able to pick off these fishies with them. Just the damage that they're able to pour out is being so great. So he will be able to make those plays and maybe get the blue team back into this game. Ringar just running into the enemy jungle having no fear whatsoever even though being spotted out by the smite buff from the wolves so they are alerted to his presence but he at this point is becoming a rather big threat not having a whole lot to his name but granted that he does have that escape and the damage from the brutalizer and the tiamat as well they may not want to pick that fight so the red team are beginning to exert their dominance in this game I mean, trying to, I mean, trying to strangle out all of the blue team's resources, denying them of their jungle camps, their buffs, and now they're beginning to accumulate dragon buffs as well, so things are definitely not looking good at this point. Tristana trying to make something happen, but at the same time, the door is pushing down as well, and the Tristana is forced to recall. But the Fiora is making a very strong push down on, almost to the inhibitor turret at the at this moment. So three members are now moving over. Four actually trying to get a kick onto this Fiora. Doesn't look like happening out of it. It quickly picks up with Kali. Fiora is quickly, quickly becoming a major threat. It doesn't look like be any will be able to deal with it. Picking up a triple kill, almost solo quadra kill. Will it be enough to pick up the pin of the exhaust does go down? It's hitting rather low, and she might be able to lifesteal off the creeps, making something happen, and the Alistair doing a... and knocks her into the turret, and the laser will be enough to finish off, so no Penta for the Fiora. But the fact that she can practically 1v4 at this moment is very, very... disconcerting for the blue team at this point. There's not that much that you can do to We're confronted with that much first. We're confronted with the Alistair thrown out of position. The box goes down, and he doesn't... I mean, he is trapped. But he is a rather tanky cow, so he does last for a while, but he does eventually go down. The Akali looking to make something happen, but he 
might not be the greatest idea with the Rengar popping on the hunt. That also like a big drop death bar onto the grapes, and the pop will be enough, but he does have to pay his own life for it. The threshold does go down combined with the light binding. So a lot of a lot of lockdown put on focus on the Akali, but she does manage to walk away as the burst coming out of the Lux is not yet extremely strong compared to the rest of the physical DPS that the team is putting out. But it is definitely something they need to keep an eye on as the bindings and the slow and the AOE slows coming out of the Lux definitely provide some zone control while the carries do their work as well. And their bush tactics are put out as well due to the wolf's buff. Trying to keep some vision up, but at this moment the map is relatively blank. Oh, not a whole lot of wards. No pink wards put down either. And the second dragon buff of the game picked up by the red team. And she will run into the Alistair and she's not looking for a pick. But they will try to run away at the moment. Just headbutting away, trying to keep the distance. And Evelyn caught out again, but she will manage to walk away. Putting down a lot of damage onto the Alistair. He might want to pop his, he does pop his ult. And he might be able to walk away. Throwing down the face of the mountain as well. Trying to save his own life. But it will not work as the... Fiora now picks up her 17th kill of the game. A 12k gold lead now, and she's just rushing into the tower. Taking the laser damage, not even very confident that she will be able to take down the turret before she will be able to go down. But Blade Walk going down. Quickly dropping the Zed, even though he did not even get to throw down the death part. Collateral damage will also snap off the Evelyn as well. And this might be game as they pick up their first inhibitor of the game. So at this point, there may not be much that the blue team can do at this point, but they will try to put a defense together, trying to wave clear as best as they can. But that buck shot there, combined with the auto attacks coming out of the graves, are extremely strong. Took almost next, the Shoshana just barely manages to dodge at the max rank. And with new fresh minion wave coming in, they will be able to put down just a little bit of poke onto these Nexus turrets. If Kali tries to go in, but she quickly goes down. And Thresh will pick up that kill. And at this point, it doesn't look like there's much that the blue team can do at this time now. With them grouping up, things, they might not be able, to pull, be able to make any picks. And their hope is just to get a... Catch them out with a very good blank for the Evelyn, but... Does play just pop out of his head. He is looking to make something happen. Drops the death mark down onto the graves, but he's quickly exhausted and he has to force drop back to his own living shadow from the grid of the death mark. Quickly denied the assassination potential. Chilling Spot goes down onto the graves, trying to display it, but he will flash it off the Zed as well. And Graves picks up a double as well. So the Shasana might be able to get a kill off the backhand of this and he does get picked off the Lux, but with the Akali and the Akali taking a lot of damage, sticking around with the Shroud, trying to stay safe, but dies onto the Graves, but does not have the damage, just barely surviving. And at this point, it looks like the red team might be looking at Baron and trying to close off this game, giving them the final final tools they need to drive the nails into the coffin for this game and it doesn't look like they will have that much to be able to stop them with anything short of pulling up a surprise not steal by the Evelyn but if they do keep the warning control up they pretty much will be guaranteed if they do manage to pull it off so we shall wait and see what happens as the red team do try and close this game out and the Zed being completely caught out, not that much that he can do, doesn't even get a chance to react. But after 40 seconds, those death timers are starting to reach minute long totals. And with the Zed knocked out, kind of did pretty much. Oh, and as the Void Boss does go down, they do finally manage to knock out the Fiora for 40 50 seconds. And they might be able to look to get some kills and Oculus and maybe swing the game back. But. They still have a Fed Graves to deal with as the Akali does try to dive in, but the Graves just butt shots the face and she'll quickly evaporate. They beat down as well. So another so an inhibitor turret going down in the mid lane as well. And there's not that much that looks like the, the 
blue team can see. I feel like I'm beating a dead horse here, but it's just looking grim. It's, it's pretty much over as they make their final pushes, the Lux. Does go down as the streamer does seem to be lagged just a little bit, but a lot of damage being put down on Alistair, making forcing him to pop his ult, he might be able to get away. And they do, but with soon to be two waves of, of empowered minions, and it doesn't look like they will be able to hold up that shield. Zed does go, does try to end, does try to go in for a desperation assassination attempt, but the Kali does manage to pick up the Lux off the back end of this, so they might be able to just uh, provide just enough damage and kills to dissuade them off of this turret for the time being, but with inhibitor, with, with these empowered super minions pushing in quickly, it doesn't look like they will be able to do that much. And with another wave, with quite a few waves of minions crashing into the top lane, they need to send someone to deal with that quickly, or they will be dealing with three exposed inhibitors. And Tristana does try to go in, but she has to dive, and she's on the wrong side of the base, and she will quickly die, but she does throw down the buster shot, trying to get away, but is not enough. So 19 and 6 for the Graves, 19 and 5 for the Fiora. Very good. But they were trying to go in for one final fight, but Zed goes in, but he is quickly taken out there. Double kill for the Fiora. Maybe even a triple at this point. Yes, a triple is secured by the Fiora, and as they make their final push onto it with that final Nexus turret holding on by just a slim sliver of health that will go down as they finally start to do some damage onto the Nexus. It will be GG to both teams. As we look to get queued up for our next match, we will be right back shortly as soon as Spectator Delay goes down and all of that. So to look at this, it's pretty much what we said. This the snowball was really strong coming out at the beginning for the blue team, but they weren't able to make a whole lot happen with it in terms of objective control, like with the towers and things like that. So, and with the top lane, Akali being pretty much left on an island to die pretty much, they didn't really have that much to do. And that Fiora just continued to get stronger and stronger, and she pretty much became an unkillable monster before that they could really identified that she was a problem and they should have maybe addressed that earlier and maybe sent Evelyn and maybe even have Zed roam up to try and get some kills off and get continue to make that snowball working but it just didn't happen so the objective control from the blue team was pretty much non-existent picking up the first outer ring of turrets but that was it no dragons granted dragon was not contested by either team much until the end so we will see what happens with that but not that much can be said about this it's just battle of the snowballs and the red team snowball just happened to be stronger so i suppose that's all we'll be right back as soon as spectator delay is back and we will see i might have someone else to spectate to cast with me we will see and we'll see you all in a couple of minutes
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we are queued up once again for another match. And a little bit of a different comp coming out. Once again, you might be playing on the blue team. We have Jungle Vi, Cassiopeia in the mid lane, Caitlyn on AD carry, Dr. Mundo in top lane, and Blitzcrank on support. And then on the purple team, we will have what appears to be a AD carry Ezreal, a Malphite top. No, that is actually a Malphite mid, excuse me. A Rumble top, Sona support, and a Amumu jungle. So this will be a very interesting matchup. A lot of CC coming out of the, a lot of team fight potential actually coming out of the purple side. So that will definitely be something interesting. And we'll have to pay attention to the Rumble as well. See if he can land those equalizers as well. Because from some of the matches that we've seen in the last couple days, Rumbles have not been too keen on their equalizers recently, so. But if they do can, if they can land those shots, it will be an extremely devastating part of their team comp, and might be able to swing the game in their favor. So we shall see. A lot of damage coming out from the Cassiopeia and the Vi potentially as well. If they, if the Cassiopeia does get rolling and get her, gets her aspect of the serpent going and gets those stacks, she will be able to. She will actually escalate into a late game monster. Same thing with the Mundo. It's just a matter of time as long as he gets those tanks, tank items, it doesn't fall terribly far behind. It will look pretty well for them. The Blitzcrank will also be will also be paying attention to the Blitzcrank as well, seeing if he can land those grabs. And that should be able to swing the lane into their favor as both the Ezreal and the Sona especially are relatively squishy targets and since the Sona herself does not have any escapes whatsoever and not taking exhaust either so looking to go a little bit aggressive but having not having that exhaust will, might hurt them a little bit if the Caitlyn does get rolling being a, the lane bully that she is and not having a way to mitigate the damage beyond her power cord Q things but we'll just wait and see I guess I shouldn't make predictions <laughs> so while we were waiting for everything to continue f loading in I'm interested to see how the how the Malphite works usually you would take the Malphite into an AD lane since with Malphite a lot of his kit synergizes with stacking armor and AP as well and with Azonia's Hourglass, that makes for an extremely efficient item on the Malphite, giving him those stats necessary to be strong. But going up against an AP laner like Cassiopeia might be a little inefficient, but it would still be able to work. You would just have to itemize and delay his power curve just a tiny bit so he would be able to mitigate all the damage over time from the Cassiopeia. Top lane should be interesting as well, just going down the list here, evaluating the different lanes. Dr. Mundo tends to be relatively passive, but he should be safe and he'll be able to scale up into late game just as long as he don't apply a ton of jungle pressure, but with the Amumu giving the bandage tosses and the curse of the sad mummy, it'll be just it should provide enough lockdown for the rumble to get down a lot of damage. But with Mundo being relatively tanky and effective in these double AP comps with a lot, and also the that is another good point that I didn't even think of, that the Mundo will be incredibly efficient as he does pick up that Spirit Visage a lot and will help to tank up a lot the large amount of magic damage as every single character on the red side does have some form of magic damage going for them. So a very interesting pick and rather smart by Perineum to pick up that Dr. Mundo. So a very late game oriented team comp for the blue team. They want to get scaling. So they'll just have to try and get through their late game. I mean get through this early game. And they should be relatively okay. At this point, Ezreal just sit back and poke. In the bottom lane. So it should just be a little bit back and forth. We'll see if the, a whole lot of aggression will mainly roll I mean center around whether or not Blitzcrank can land those hooks or not. So a lot of pressure being put onto Heart of Gold in this matchup to see if he will be able to provide those hooks that channel his inner mad life. I'm quickly becoming my one of my catchphrases it appears like. I think that's like the third or fourth time I've used that phrase. But it's true. Or we could say his Afro Moo or Green Tea. We'll see. We've got to give those other international players their, their time in the spotlight. Good Blitzcrank players in their own right as well. So we salute you as well. 
<laughs> so it looks like they will be trying to pull off the classic Blitzcrank grab, trying to secure and deny the blue buff from the Amumu, which would be a very smart play, as a lot of Amumu's early clear speed does center around that, but they do catch wind of it as they do have a ward sitting right outside that bush, so they will be alerted and the ward times out so they placed it just a little early so they may or may not be alerted that this is in fact going to happen so they will go ahead and attack and grab the grab the blue buff and trying to run away and we won't get to see it but they will probably end up securing that unless the Mumu comes around and tries to smite steel for it but they do actually pick it up so a very strong a very good denial by the blue team and that's very good helping to delay that Amumu quite a bit as he'll have to go through the jungle without blue buff. So as they rotate back in the Blitzcrank will take a little bit of damage from the Sona Q. But he should be able to just walk it off and he'll be okay. A little bit of poke coming down onto the Moondot thanks to the Flame Spitter of Rumble. He's keeping up that danger zone giving him that extra 50% off of those burns. So the Moondot might need to be a little bit, a little bit careful. Cassio also starting with a nice early push onto the Malphite as his wave clear is not really all that strong as he started off with the Q as the, seism the seismic shard and the ground slam, so not a ton going for him at the moment. A little bit of poke going down onto the Sona, but she should be able to heal that up and be relatively safe with it. Rubble hitting in that, uh, hitting into, going into a silent state, so going a little bit overboard onto those cooldowns. You know, the hook does land on the Sun, but she's forced to flash away and she goes down really low, and the Ignite is dropped as well, and the Caitlyn 90 caliber nets in, and Blitzcrank does manage to pick up the first blood off of his Ignite ticks. So very well played, and a good hook by Karini. So while we're looking at the team, the Dr. Moon, uh, top, top lane rather, the Dr. Mundo is knocked down quite low and he's taking another hit from the Electro Harpoons. So we will see. He will be able to, I mean, once he hits six and he does unlock that. His ultimate, he will be able to regen back up and he should be okay for the majority of his lightning experience against this rumble. So he just pretty much just needs to wait it out and not go really aggressive. If he does fall behind just a little bit farm, only five down at the only four farm down at the moment, he should be okay. And a little bit of poke going down onto the Caitlyn as well. So just a little bit of back and forth as we expected as neither team is looking to go excessively aggressive as Blitzcrank is low on mana and that and that rocket grab does cost quite a bit of mana. So missing would pretty much put him out for quite a while. But as the sun does look to go aggressive, he does miss the hook. So a little tragic for the Blitzcrank. And a lot of damage coming down on Caitlyn, forcing her to use heal as well. And it'll back away, having to burn their summoner as well. So that will lead a little bit of a summoner advantage onto leading with the blue side as well. With both of their auxiliary summoners down, but they both still do have their flashes. The Sona did have to burn her flash as well. And an attempt to get away earlier off the first blood play as well. So it looks like Vibe might be a might be looking to start ganking now that she does have her she does have her blue smite up with the chilling smite, giving the 50% slow. And the Q does connect, putting down a lot of damage, forcing the Rumble to flash away. And that would be a win, out in my opinion. So they might just back off and stick with it. The Mumu might be roaming up for a counter gank. But at this point, the Vi might be left alone as the Mundo does go back, trying to pick up some items. So Vi might be in a bit of a spot, Amumu getting spotted out by the ward, but we'll pick that away with the Raptor buff. Vi might want to back up, she's in a bit of a spot here. Amumu will tank the Q and forcing the Vi to flash away, taking quite a bit of damage, but does manage to escape at cost of her flash. So, a little bit of an oversta overstaying her welcome by the Vi. Should have just popped the flash and maybe taxed just a little bit. Maybe it's just how it goes. And the hook onto the Ezreal, and he will pop, have to pop the Arcane Shift. 
so not that much coming out of it, but the Mulu Q does land, putting down a little bit of damage on the Cassia, and the Flash ult off the mouth, at securing the kill. A lot of resources burned, and popping the Ignite as well, desperately wanting to get that with the last ticks of his mana, so... With his flash down, the map that will be a bit of a juicy target for them on the repeated ganks, but well played, securing the kill, and that should be just enough to get him going, but we will have to wait and see as Cassiopeia does finally get to go back and picks up her tier of the goddess, so she will begin stacking that up. Getting mana off her additional cast and giving her ability power once she finally does upgrade that to a Seraph's Embrace. Doran's ring as well to help with her mana sustain in addition to the tier. Blitzcrank looking on the offense and does hook the Sona with the power just knocking her up, putting a lot of damage and then not going down as well. And Caitlyn flashes for it, flashes for the kill and does in fact secure it. But with the Caitlyn falling low due to the Ezreal poke, they might want to just back off and not press their advantage on this turret. But with Ezreal running low on mana, his way clear will be hurting just a little bit. And he does look to go in on the aggression. Blitzcrank does miss another hook. So, the movement coming down for a counter gank as well to help out with the lane pressure. He might try to make something happen. He is level 6 and does not... He does in fact have this Curse of the Sad Mummy, so that would be able to make some plays. And it does look like the blue team does secure the junk on the Rift Scuttler. So, the movement will tank the one once again, preventing Vi from coming down. But the Cassiopeia does look to be rotating around. She should know that the thing you know, is in the, in the bush, but they do rotate to Dragon. Look at the top lane. About a 10 CS differential for him, so not a whole lot going on there. But it should be relatively safe. We'll see if Vi might be able to pull off the smart steal on this Dragon. If she does go, she has the Q charge up. They might be able to make something happen. The red team does get it a little bit of a miss by the Vi, and she will have to pay for her pay with her life for that. So a two for zero and a dragon as well. And a lot of hope being put down on that Sona. She might want to be careful and just back off, but a lot of damage being put down on Caitlyn as well with the seismic charge and the Ezreal cubes as well. And Malphat does pick up his third kill of the game, already having that needlessly large rod at nine minutes. A lot of damage coming out of him with the unstoppable force and a little bit of lag. And the rebel does drop the equalizer, but it does not really affect him, forcing him to go back. And the Amu and the moon does pop his ult, giving him that bonus regen. And things will equalize again. Ah, puns. So with the red team backing as well, Blitzcrank returning to lane, forcing them to come back. And does put the Sona and does secure the kill with the Q E R combo as well. So very well played by the Blitzcrank to make that blind shot into. No, they did have a ward in there. Excuse me, to make that kill happen. So well, so a very good solo play by the Blitzcrank to secure that kill with Ezreal low on mana and not having his. Oh, he does have a flash up, but he still needs to be rather careful. And not that much happening. The Cassiopeia does hold an 8 CS advantage right now in the mid lane, but those kills do seem to counteract and actually put Malphite at a bit of a gold advantage at the moment. But as she is counting up those stacks, 14 at the moment, she does not yet have enough to grant her that first stage of Aspect of the Serpent. So. Moving out, picking up his red buff, giving him that extra burn, burn damage and the slow on hit as well to help with his ganking power. And Mundo pushing up very far, and this might be an opportunity for the Mumu to come in as Mundo does pop his ult. But he does have flash, and the Vi is looking to make something happen in the mid lane as well. Holding out that one, the one does, and the Q, sorry, the Q does connect, but. The Malphite ult is still extremely strong and managed to get the kill, but the Vi does manage to pick up the Malphite in the end. The Crescendo does connect as Sona does rub down to the mid lane. The Blitzcrank in a bit of a bad spot here, but he will be able, should be able to walk away. So a lot of ults burn in that fight. The Cassiopeia, the Vi, Malphite, Sona, and Amumu all burning ults in that skirmish. So a two for one in favor of the red team. So very well played by them. 
Mundo taking a lot of damage from the minions and the flame spitter as well. And drops the E-Blast but completely misses. That rumble ult is a bit hard to land due to the vector casting of that. It's a little odd compared to most of the other skill shots in this game. The Sona does stand there. It takes the net and the tilt over Peacemaker as well. So a lot of damage going down onto her. But she should be able to sustain through that as she does have that mana pot help with the mana so she can W her way back up to full health. So with the, <clears throat> the means pushing in on the bottom lane, but the Piltover Peacemaker will make quick work of that and try to almost equalize the lanes back out in terms of pressure. So not a whole lot going down now, just a little bit of poke here and there. And a hook onto the Sunder. They did have that Bush Warded, and the Caitlyn does pick up a kill. Very well played, and nice waiting game as to make it seem potentially seem like they did not have a ward on that, so very patient. And another gank coming out of the top lane, Rubble popping his ult once again, and it is up to the Vi. Does she want to go aggressive on this? And I guess she will not, as the camera directs away. So nothing really happening that much down there, but a play down bottom as well. The Amumu tries to come in, but misses the bandage toss. So another failed, I mean another... Part. So missing a Q here and there should not be enough and the seismic shard dealing a lot of damage as the Malphite does now have a sword shoes and the needless little large rod and an Aptom round out a lot of, quite a bit of AP as uh, Cassiopeia is taking quite a lot of damage just from that point click grass and does look to go rest the unstoppable force combined with the E is just too much and the Cassiopeia will go down 0 and 4 so having quite a bit of trouble in this game as the Malphite is now 5-1. Not too good. Rumble does land a very a nice equalizer, but not enough to chunk the Mundo out. True Shot Barrage is also fired to try and deny bottom line of some minions, so they might be able to get a good push down onto this tower as Ezreal does have his sheen and a tier of the guys, so going for that popular blue build of Ezreal that we see from time to time. And they should be able to get quite a bit of damage onto this, but it looks like Vi might be rotating down to try and get a gank off, but by the time that she shows up, they will have a large portion of damage, but they don't even wait. They decide to go with offensive in on the Caitlyn and dropping her down low, but the Blitzcrank does manage to land the hook, and the Ace of the Hole does go out, and we will see both of the bottom lane for the red team go down, and the turret does remain just barely, and they might be able to clear away the minions before it does fall, so very good counter engage by the blue team making the best out of a bad situation and getting two for nothing out of that so very very good trade and then might no dragon is down for another five seconds so they might be able to make something happen clearing out the pink ward so they will be able to deny them but knowing that final tick of the ward might have since the red team actually does have this time and they might be mobilizing to make a play and secure their second dragon but the blue team does want to make something happen. The True Shot Barrage is fired down to the bottom lane, trying to knock off some of the minions off the tower. The hook onto the Lulu Assault Battery pop as well, but the flash to the side mummy should be enough. And Blitzcrank is forced to flash away, popping his mana barrier as well. So, and they will clean, I mean, make a disengage from this fight. The Mundo now picking up a Spirit Visage now, so helping him with that regen and his health restore, so he's on his way to becoming that unkillable tank, but man, especially with that Malphite damage coming through, they will need that tank to maybe come roam down and make some teleport plays, as the blue team, as the red team, excuse me, does appear to be making their play for their second dragon, as they do clear out a few wards, and they do, and the blue team does have control of the Rift Scuttler, so they do know that this is happening, but they, but it doesn't even like have an appropriate response, and red will pick up their second dragon of the game with very little to no resistance at all put up by the blue team. Despite their wards, they just did not have their people in place with some oddly timed with some poorly timed backs as well. Did not be able to properly contest that dragon and Vi just not able to go in there without having to having to flash away or just simply to die to, to, die to the all the damage coming out of the red team. And a little bit of a fight coming out of the top lane. But it's sure. Oh, they're going in. The Munda does pop the ult. The equalizer goes down. But the Munda does quickly sidestep it. 
hook onto the Sona once again, and she does go down, drops the crescendo with her dying breath, but it's not enough, and Ezreal might be in a bit of a trouble, might be in a bit of a spot. He does arcane shift away, but Caitlyn quickly tries to close the gap with the 90 caliber net, and a hook, another hook by the Blitzcrank, forcing him to flash away, and the ace in the hole goes through, granting Caitlyn yet another kill, five and one, so that might be just enough gold to grant her that infinity edge and give her a lot of tower pressure. And Vi looks to go in, and a little bit of a delayed ult by the Cassiopeia. It might have been able to make something happen of that, but maybe not. So we will... See, Malphite still did have his ult, so if things did start to go south, he could have used that ult defensively. He got away, or he could have possibly turned. We do not know exactly what would have happened out of that, so... Rumble trying to clear away the minions with the Flame Spitter, doing... Taking the cleavers like a man. But he does manage to sidestep that one as he is a little bit of a little low and does not have any health potions or anything he does have the double amp tone trying to build towards the seeker's arm guard as well giving him a little bit of armor as well to deal to defend off the mundo auto attacks but building towards that as well and the leandries and he does pick up the sword shoes as well so his penetration he has the magic penetration that he needs to be in to be a major wrecking force in this fight and blitzcrank will manage to get a very nice hook onto the mouth by catching him out and securing the kill so an assist for cassiope might be just might give her a little bit of a nudge in this fight the is forced to try and defend but a missed hook by the blitzcrank he tries to go in just Landing the knockup, trying to give Cassio enough time to land some damage and try and secure this tower. But with Ezreal roaming uh, rotating around as well, forcing the Talisman of Ascension to be popped by the Blitzcrank, giving them that move speed enough to disengage from the fight. So to try to clear out some vision, but will get caught out by the hook once again, picking up another kill. So 5 and 0 oh for that Blitzcrank. A kill secure, maybe. KS, possibly, but a kill is a kill. Putting that pressure off the map, but a not, but a double hook, and they might be able to pick off this Amumu as well. First, the sad money is popped as well. Ice in the hole comes out, but not before the Cassiopeia can actually snap off. And they do manage to disengage and putting down a little bit of damage on Malphite. His unstoppable force is down. The solar battery is dropped, and they will be able to take him down. Six kills now for the Caitlyn. A lot of very well played by them, and they do manage to pick up the tier one mid in addition to that. So top one, I mean tier top, also remaining to be an island. Not a whole lot of jungler presence made by either side for a long period of time. So we will see if they will, whenever they will finally begin to make these teleport plays and roam down and join up with the rest of their team. For now, they're pretty much just content with seeing their farming. Mundo does pop his ultimate just to try and stay healthy and avoid a lot of damage coming out of the rumble with his with the majority of the construction that he needs for this build. Not me in a point right now. Combine him with the spirit visage. Mundo might be looking at a Warmog's armor holding on to that rejuvenation beam. So we will see as that build progresses and see. And Blitzcrank making the smart decision, picking up that Aegis of the Legion as well. Giving their team a little bit more magic resist to try and stay away, but Malphat popping the ult and picking off the Vi. Big scary rock monster assassin. Not, not too much that the Vi can do about that lockdown before she can even make a play to try and escape. But Blitzcrank has once again found out that Sona and does not land the hook. So with Dragon up in a minute and five seconds, looks like the blue team might actually be in a position to contest this Dragon. But with a lot of damage going on to the Blitzcrank, he is forced to pop the Talisman of Ascension and Bale flashes to make it over the wall. The Cassiopeia is sitting there landing a nice two-man ultimate and able to pick off the Sona. So very well played by him and a nice ultimate coming out of Cassio. Picking up her own needlessly large drop as well, probably build, building towards that Gravadon's death cap potentially. So a lot of AP damage coming out of the Cassiopeia with the Archangel staff and that, but Ace in the hole comes out and it 
A lot of damage on the Ezreal. He's not being forced to back. Mujo trying to wail away on the start on the Equalizer is done. It's standing in the Equalizer, popping his ult, trying to see if the damage would be enough to bounce it out. But he is not able to take, take the turret, so he does have to roam away. So three men in mid, and Dragon now spawning up in seven seconds. It looks like the blue team might fall away and try to pick up this Dragon since they not have the timer for this. It does look like they will be making that play as the dragon is now alive. And by beginning this dragon, trying to give them their first dragon of the game. So very well played by them, but the red pings do go down, meaning that the red team is looking for a fight and sort of moving in. But she does get hooked and will quickly be evaporated. And the kill going to Cassiopeia, now going three and four. So she is starting to come back into this game despite a very rough landing phase with the Malphite. And a bit of lag on the spectator, but that should be okay. Not a whole lot happened. Mundo, no. The push on the red side was finally enough, and they did manage to pick off that tier one bottom turret. But Mundo does respond and pick, picks up the top turret as well. So with a two turret advantage to the blue team, very well played. As they do seem to be making some very good map movements, and the Assault of Battery instantly dropped on the Ezreal, but it does Arcane Shift away, but will he be safe? It doesn't look like he will. The Shilling Smite was dropped as well, so Flash Auto by the... by completing the Denting Boys and giving them just enough burst damage to complete and kill off the Ezreal as he did pop both his Flash and his Heal to try and get away. So a very nice play by the Vi. Cassiopeia does now have her Seraph's Embrace completed, giving her that shield at the cost of some of her mana so she will not be as squishy and might be able to survive some of the mouth outburst as the and the Mundo has finally roamed down and starting to make some put some damage down onto the mid turret alongside the Vi. And Blitzcrank doing a bit of some semi-proxy farming using his static using his static field to try and pick off some of the minions, giving a stronger push onto the bottom side as they now have taken down the tier 2 in that lane as well. So a lot of pressure beginning to amass for the blue team and a very well played altogether. The spot does secure the blue buff as Cassiopeia does seem to have most of her mana under control with that Seraph's Embrace, gaining her that 1000 mana. So she should be okay until she gets in these long extended team fights. But at this point, I think they should be okay, as they do seem, they, they do seem to try and make a play onto the Rumble. It does force him to fall back, and popping his Flash as well. Blitzcrank trying to make a play, misses the hook at point blank. He runs, he runs into the Sun and the Malphite, and Malphite will pick up his 8th kill of the game. Now having that Abyssal Scepter and the Zonians, he's becoming quite a dangerous mage at this point. Doing quite a bit of damage, the True Shot Barrage does go through, but does not manage to do a whole lot of damage to right? pick anyone off, but the Unstoppable Force does, and the Vi does fall. A nice Equalizer dropped as well, and the first of the Sad Mummy goes down as well. The Caitlyn might be able to pick off a couple kills here. Does get the Amumu, and we have two, and the Rumble Low as well. The Cassiope does manage to get that kill, and a kill exchange between the Sona and the Cassiopeia. And Malphite popping his Zonia's running very low, and Ezreal trying to dissuade the Mundo off with some of those arcane shots. Mystic shots, excuse me. So backing off, and, and Caitlyn barely holding on just to a few slivers of life, but overall a 3 for 2 in favor of the blue team, so very nice play despite all of the AoE, very powerful skill shots that are coming out of the red team. They are managing, they are managing to come out of these spots even and a 4k gold lead for them, so it's very well played at this point. So Ezreal picking up some of these jungle camps, trying to accelerate his build as he does have that Muramana finished as well, and got two of the components of this Triforce, which he might With the blue build Ezreal, you do need that mana, so that does make a little bit of Triforce power. And it looks like the Blitzcrank might be able to pick him off, but he does miss the hook. He's still going in on the aggressive, drops the Ignat, so he will be able to see him in vision, and he does secure it with his E, giving him that extra attack damage to finish off the kill. But with Rumble and Sona showing up, he might be in a bit of a spot, drops down a ward, trying, might be a signal for a TP kill, a TP play. But with Mundo right behind him, drops a little bit of a whack, and he'll just walk out. So Mumu now picking up that Raptor buff, helping to deal with Vision, and he does quickly get spotted out, so nice little move by the Cassiopeia. Maybe. No, he does still have the Raptor buff. I do not jump on that much, so I'm just going to speed on that. 
A missed equalizer by the Rumble, but does seem to clear off anyone advancing as well. But the Mundo running in on the Amundo dealing a lot of AoE damage, but he is in a bit of a bad spot and does try to run away. But with that two running on, he does have that reduced crowd control, so he might be able to get away. Randolins popped somewhere by the Amundo as well, so Blitzcrank will go down to the Amundo. And Amundo is still running, but he will fall to the Malphite. But meanwhile, Cassiopeia does manage to catch off and pick off the Ezreal as they are making a very strong push, taking down the inhibitor turret. So very well played in making a counter play against all the aggression put down in the left red side jungle. So well played. Answer for an answer. A couple of kills in response for a tier 3 turret. So we'll see what that inhibitor exposed. They need to be very careful about some tactical plays. While they're all hyperextended out like that, they need... I mean, map awareness would definitely be something that they need to look at. So with most of the people rolling out of the base, we can take a look at item builds. This doesn't really feel that much going on at the moment. Dr. Mundo does appear to have the components for a guardian angel, giving him that revive, helping to stay in a annoyance for the majority of these extended team fights alongside the spirit visage and a raptor club which seems to be the components for a home record so which looks like it might signal that the blue team is looking for some tower diving plays which would be very interesting to see Caitlyn now finish have sitting on a static ship and defending the edge giving her most of the damage that she needs for the majority of this mid game until she hits her out of spikes Cassiopeia popping her ult as we do have a bit of a fight going down in the jungle the red team a bit segmented at this moment. Rumble kind of set off by the Dr. Mundo trying to make a play. But Vi does come in, lands the Q, and does a lot of damage, and he will go down. Dr. Mundo picking up his first kill of the game. And now with the red team forcing to make a little bit, trying to make a defensive play onto their tier 2, trying to make sure that it doesn't fall. Malphite still does have his unstoppable force up, and Ezreal fires the true shot barrage, trying to pick off some of these minions. But they are relatively low. Malphite will make quick work of that wave. And now with Dragon back up, it looks like he might not be to play onto their second Dragon of the game. And they will pick it up, giving them that increased damage on turrets, so it will help with their push power quite a bit. And Sona popping her flash, trying to avoid the Blitzcrank hook, so that is a that is a vital team fight initiation. Besides the Malphite ult, that would be really missing for the next five minutes and Rumble trying to TP up top trying to save this trying to save this tower but it looks like it will not be enough to dissuade the moon does he will take it he's becoming a rather tanky beast at this moment with the with the merc treads and the spirit visage he should be able to shrug off most the majority of the damage that the rumble can push out so a miss on the rocket grab by the blitz crank trap but that will be enough to push them off of the turret as the wave is sitting pr in the practical dead middle of middle lane Wow, that was a lot of minutes. But with bottom lane pushing as well, they might want to have some, someone down on that way. And Ezreal exasperating that by clearing out that entire bottom wave of minions. So a very large wave stacking up in bottom lane. And they might want to send someone down there to deal with that. Or that will be a lot of pressure. It does look like Caitlyn will be going down there to do just that. And then we does spot out a ward. Is jungle trying to clear out that blue buff so they can keep them away from that and make sure that they do have that resource available to them as their mana consumption is relatively high at this point. Moomoo running very low on mana and he's very mana dependent so that early blue he might still be feeling the effects of that early blue buff denial from the beginning of this game. He is a little bit behind but he has been power farming so is ahead of the bar in creep as well. Completing the Magus enchantment as well, giving him a little bit of ability power, putting a little bit of punch behind his curse of the side mummies and his shred from his from his W as well. So he will be a bit of a, of a force to be reckoned with in these team fights, and he does look like he wants to go aggressive. He does like to put the onto the window, gets a two-man ult and a very nice equalizer combined with the unstoppable forces enough to drop down the Cassiopeia. And the true shot barrage does go through and chunks down for five just a little bit. And the Q does connect with it. And the, the Blitzcrank might not be able to get, he flashes over to meet up with the Dr. Mundo, but he's on the wrong side of the map and he will go down to the Ezreal as well. See, now does have that Triforce completed, he will be doing quite a bit of damage, but that spot is 
Quite a bit delayed as most people do expect to see that item coming in at about 16 minutes. So a bit of a delayed effect on that, but he does manage to pick up a double kill and they now have their sights set on Baron well. But at the same time, Blue Team has another turret falling as well, the tier 1 top falling. So a lot of a nice little swing of momentum at this point. Baron now down to 5,000 HP and Bush is pretty strong without onto that. But Blue Team is now mobilizing, trying to make something happen, but I don't think that they will be able to contest this. And they do pick up Baron buff for their team, granting them that extra, granting them empowered minions whenever they are in lane. Alongside the empowered cooldown, I mean the empowered teleports back to base as well. So they are able to escape. Baron Pit, but I will quickly try to deny them of their Raptor Camp. And they might be setting the Yes, they seen that the blue turret, seeing as that tier 2 was relatively low, they decided to just go in and take that down. So, seven turrets down. So they have the entire outer ring of turrets taken down for the red team with that exposed inhibitor down in the bottom lane. So. And with both of the waves pushing in favor of them, but they do have, but the red team does have those Baron and Power Minions, so they need to be careful with that, with that mid lane push. They might be able to get at least a tower off this if they do commit to the push, but they do decide to rotate as they see the few people picking off by some wards. And Amumu looking, but Caitlyn will, looking for the pick, but Caitlyn will dodge away with the 90 caliber net, as Dragon is now up in two minutes as they might be looking to put down some wards. But they decide to, to push out the bottom wave as well, giving that Baron bonus to their minions, helping in the push as well. So this might be something that the red team, the blue team, just needs to wait out at this point, as they do get a lot of advantages. And this tier one might be going down. Blitzcrank forced to use his pull just to try and keep them off the turret, but the tier one in mid does go down to those Baron empowered minions. So that is beginning to become a bit of annoyance for the blue team, and they just need. They don't need to probably make a whole lot of aggressive plays and just wait out this Baron buff for the next couple of minutes until they, excuse me, until that times out and gives them and evens the playing field once again. Dragon now up in a minute. Some of uh, a few more items coming in. Ezreal picking up that last whisper, trying to shred through the Mundo. Oh, a Zerat portal picked up for the for the Doctor Mundo. My bad not an ohm record so they will be trying to make some additional pushes as well in addition to what they already can by spawning those minions trying to counteract the strong push that is being made down mid so dr rudo making a pretty decent split push effort but at the rate right that this is going they might won't be enough to counteract as they do so put a lot of pressure knock down the tier two mid as well if blitzcrank hook goes out but does only hook a minion but the Cassiopeia wave clear might be enough to push them off the turret unless they're willing to tank it, and they are not, so they back away. Robo has finished his three core hours to torment the Zonia Hourglass and the Sword Shoes, giving him a lot of penetration, but as we say that, Nice Hourglass coming out of Crystal Sad Mummy, chucking down the Blitzcrank, and he does go down to the Rubble. Cassiopeia is also taken down by the Sona, picking up her kill, picking up a her third kill of the game. That Ardent Sensor is giving them a lot of attack speed damage, but Mundo is continuing to split push, and that might not be the best idea, as it's only G, as an only Caitlyn and Vi to push down this, and they do lose an inhibitor for that. And Rumble does recall to try and push the Dr. Moon off of his turret. Chunk down to about half HP now. So this is at this point it could be anyone's game as the Baron is now tied off, but he does have that drop portal sitting right outside of his base. But the Rumble should be able to make quick work of that relative quick. There's a lot of damage going on to that. So that will be cooldown burnt and down for a while. Red Team now picking up. It should be there. Second. Dragon. Dragon number three. Excuse me. Caitlyn coming by dropping the Assault Battery going after the Ezreal through the Flash and the Arcane Shift. But it might have gone in a little bit too deep. Her hex trigger popping as well, giving her that magical shield, and she will be able to get away. So well played, and a nice pick onto the Ezreal. Bye bye. So now the blue team looking and deciding what they need to do, they decide to pick up the Rift Scuttler, trying to give them some vision of the river area in front of the Dragon Pit. And Cassiopeia now at. Looks like. Uh, 
150 or 150 stacks at this moment so she does have two stacks on her aspect of the serpent at this moment giving her a bit of damage at this point so now the blue team are making a strong push down off the bottom lane and Mundo not taking a ton of damage from those I was taking a lot of damage from the this week. Soon as we say that, a nice hook by the Blitzcrank, taking down the Sona. So with the support down, they might be able to get the push down onto this inhibitor. I have to wait and see the ships clearing out. But a pretty strong inhibitor with super minion pushing on to mid lane so they need to be careful. Taking a, a unstoppable force is pop by the Alpha and Cassiopeia will pop as well. Linda doing a lot of damage. You probably won't be able to get out of this. And Caitlyn means with the moon right her, it might be a little. Yeah, she's be going down as the first of the time mean, is popped as well, and Blitzcrank will be dropped as well, giving them a four for one by the red team with Vi left alone to defend the base, as they do seem to be barreling down mid lane, trying to maybe end this game. So we shall see. Cassiopeia only having 10 seconds left on her death timer might be able to help with the push, but now they are making their way onto the Nexus turrets. So, Assault and Battery Pop about the Vile, but may not have been the smartest idea at this point, as she will take a lot of damage and is forced to flash, but she does manage to get away. But with the Super Minions arriving in the base, a lot of damage already put down onto the Nexus turrets, and they will just walk away at that. But, they, but the pings do go down, and it looks like they might be rotating into the top lane, trying to take down the remaining outer turrets for remaining inner turrets excuse me and it does go down and they do make a pick on the Cassiopeia oh she, yeah she finally does go down to the Amumu and they can do this but the ice and hold does go down triggering the flash from the Malphite the Caitlyn is still a major issue that they need to be careful with having their three three items and the components for a Phantom Dance so she will be putting out a lot of DPS and they need to be careful about that. But that major tank threat is still kind of there. Malphite now Mundo now picking up a thorn mail, trying to get rid of some of the auto attack damage, but with the Ezreal now going for a try to fend off the Ezreal appears like, but it seems that the major threat in this game is the Dr. Moon or the, the Malphite, excuse me, sorry about that. So, with the double Abyssal Scepter, that is a lot of damage and a lot of shred coming out of the red team, combined with the Rumble and the Malphite as well. And then sitting on another needlessly large rod and the components for the Rabidon's Death Cap, so the Malphite still has a lot of power to be attained in his build, alongside another empty item slot that might potentially, might potentially go into a Guardian Angel to help protect keep him safe in these spots and will continue to make him a threat even after he dies so that will definitely be something that he could consider Malphite making a roam Malphite and Illumina looking to get a pick on the tank where they saw her go into the bush and they're thinking they know that she's there and they do pick off the fight in the meantime Mundo making yet another push on top lane but he is forced to back as they do lose the Caitlyn and the Vasa two of the members down and they need all hands on deck to try and dissuade them Sway the red team off the push, the Blitzcrank hook misses, and the Equalash goes down, completely dividing the Cassiopeia off of the Rumble, but doing a lot of damage. And the Rumble might be out for the fight, but the Cassiopeia does go down, and Ezreal is in a bit of a bad spot, and he will probably go down as well. And the tier 3 top one does go down for the red team, and a double kill for the Blitzcrank, but Mundo is all that's left. And goes around but he's on the wrong side of the base running out and doesn't really do that much as they do start to do put down some damage onto this inhibitor and it looks like they will be able to pick that up so another inhibitor for the red team so we need to be very careful about so they need to be careful and have at least one person put out onto way clearing duty but a lot of, but a bit of, about of a third health taking down on the on the top red inhibitor so that is something that they might be able to make a play off of rumble now having to take care of that Zerah portal but now that everyone is backing looks like their window might have lost on that as baron is now spawned up and dragon spawning in 25 seconds 
The Blitzcrank now picking up a Mesha Soul Stealer, confident that he might be able to stay out of these fights and become a bit of a pump out a little bit more damage with that extra AP. But he will have to be very careful with the positioning, with his positioning, as he does have to get in front of these fights. <coughs> Blue team does now seem that they want this Baron, or at least to contest it, setting up a few wards. So it looks like we might have a very crazy team fight going on here, but he does trigger off the Baron with his passive off of his ult, so Blitzcrank taking quite a bit of damage chunked out into half, so he will have to back on that. Red team spotted out by a Spotted out by a red ward. Excuse me. It does look like that might be their cue. They do pick off the Caitlyn with relative ease, but popping two ults for it may not have been worth it. It might be just enough to secure the Baron as the other team might, as the blue team are scrambling, trying to get there and make some kind of they decide instead to not contest the Baron and go instead for Dragon. Trade from Dragon for Baron. Dragon number three for the blue team, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, dragon number three, but the Amumu does show up and does not just to dissuade them and a lot of damage onto the Cassiopeia. Of course, the side mode popped as well as the Sexton Dragon trying to keep the Cassiopeia alive. But she's taken rather well and trying to get away from this fight, but she will go down to the bandage tops from the Amumu. A nice equalizer trying to keep the Blitz Crank away, and he does have to flash some two members down for the blue team now. As they do pick up the dragon, the blue team did not even get the dragon off of that play. So four dragons now for the red team combined with Baron. So they will use those empowered recalls to go back to base before they begin with this one push. But now that they are back, Blitz Crank trying to do his best and put a little bit of damage onto that, onto the bottom inhibitor. Might be needed in base as they make a three man push, four man push, excuse me, onto the Nexus turret in case the hole goes down and, and the Caitlyn quickly goes down to the combination of Unstoppable Force along with the Sheen procs from, his, uh, from the Iceborne Gauntlet. But the first of the inhibitor turrets now goes down, and with the second one sitting at half health and three members down, it doesn't look like there's that much that the blue team could do at this point. They were putting up very well, or they're putting up quite a good fight at the beginning, but it just Quickly snowball out of control. Uh, I guess it's just. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And this looks like the blue team might be able to make something happen and keep the game going off for just a little bit longer. But Ezra does manage to juke around and take down the Nexus. So that is GG to the red team and well played by the blue team as well. So, looking at what went. at what exactly happened in this game. Um, could you bring up the scorecard, please, so I can look at some of the things going on? Or, uh, press continue. Or, or that's enough of the scorecard, I suppose. Um, sorry about that. So we can look at some of the builds and what exactly happened in this game so as we look at these scorecards. So Caitlyn was sitting on quite a bit of gold and had four items as she was working towards that Banshee spell and she had, she potentially had the DPS to win them that fight but the positioning of the gap closers by the red team was really strong and not enough peel honestly by the, by the blue team, by the Mundo and the Blitzcrank and potentially the Vi as well. She went relatively full damage picking up only the Spectre's Cow and the Mob Malmortius, a semi-defensive item. She went Five, five, and five, so not completely terrible. Cassiopeia did do relatively well as well, having a very strong build with the Void Staff, the Rabbit on Deathcap, the Seraph's Embrace, and the Sword Shoe. So she, the damage was there, but being the relatively squishy target that she was, she just couldn't last in these fights as well. And looking at the Ezreal, it was a bit of an odd pick to go for the Muramana first instead of prioritizing the Triforce. Having the tier stack and then finishing that off into a Muramana might have been smarter, but that's just a personal preference. I'm not sure. The Triforce peak at about 15 minutes is extremely strong, and having a Triforce AD carry over something that has a mid-game power slope, has a mid-game um, power trough like Caitlyn, and that might have helped a little bit, but it's just a just some of the builds went. I mean, and with the Malphite going, that was a very that was a very key part in the red team's victory. Is they did have a lot of AOE um, wombo combo, as you will, 
having the um, Amumu engage in or with the Flash Crescendo combined with the Unstoppable Force, and it honestly not that much that they could have done with that. I mean, with so much damage coming off from a f practically full AP Malphite combined with the Curse of the Sad Mummy with that Magus enchantment, that's a lot of damage and really hard to react with that. And pretty much you just had to try and dodge the relatively large en engage that they had and uh, kind of hard without a cleanse or a Banshee's Veil or something like that, which I did see on a couple of the team, team members of the blue team. But well played overall, just a few things went wrong. The objective control was still kind of, was, st was better than in the last game. We did see four dragons, six dragons overall being picked up. So that was much better compared to the three, I think, that might have been picked up the last game. So... It was, just a, it was just a different game, not as much of a snowball race. They did actually have front lines to deal with in this game. So, that's about it, I suppose. I don't really know where to go from here. So, I suppose that we'll just wait on another match to be queued up, potentially. And um, we will be right back after a short break and wait for the spectator to light to time out. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you all in just a couple minutes.
have another game queued up. We have Orbit Jungle trying for the Malphite top and Oriana mid. A Sivir at the Eddie Carry position and oh well, Spectate Delay did already kick in. I guess I was a little slow on the uptake on this one. So while we are waiting on everything to come up, there we go. And Annie as support. So a lot of damage coming out of that bot lane. Another Amumu jungle, Aurelia top, Heartseeker vein. Oh, I read off the name. Um, <clears throat> at the AD carry position with a Nami and an Ari in the mid lane. Wow, that was really quick. The music started coming through. So very short spectator delay in this game. So this is a very orient pick oriented comp coming out from the purple side. They're looking to get Nami bubbles, can vein condemns. Equilibrium straps, charms, very quick, burn you down really quick before you can even react. Similar to the last game, but not as much of it. The team fight presence is still there, but it's maybe not as stackable and as much of a threat as it was in the last game, but it is definitely something to be feared. <clears throat> and looking on the blue side, they do appear to be looking for a very... On the converse, they are looking for a very wombo combo esque team comp in this in these fights with the Ori with the Malphite ulting and with the Oriana ball on top of it. So with the double knockups from the Shockwave and the Unstoppable Force, and then on top of that with the Flash Tippers ult provided by the Annie, that is a lot of CC and a lot of time for the <laughs> Sivir to sit there and chunk out a lot of DPS. Assuming that they do have the time to. Assuming that she does get ahead long enough to do a lot of damage. Not a whole lot of tank threat from the purple side, but they do have the Aurelia, which might be a little bit of an issue with that due to the extra tenacity that she gets. And she can dive the back line as well, so they need to be very careful with that. And Annie will need to stay very close to her supports in these fights. So they will be able to get this stuns off and keep the Sivir safe, but she does have the spell shield also to keep her safe as well in these lanes so while we're waiting for the extra 20 seconds before the minions to spawn for the jungle camps to spawn we can pick some of the other things Malphite will need to be relatively careful Aurelia has not selected her skill yet but depending on what she goes with will dictate the tempo for the beginning of this as Malphite does not have very strong clear until he hits, until he gets a couple levels in, because he only has the Sasser Shard, which is just a single target, not a whole lot, not a whole lot of damage, which is a little bit. As Orbit will do a solo, but not require a leash. As he starts off on Gromp, well, Duo Gromp starts actually from both the Amumu and the Warwick as well. And a lot of damage going on to the Oriana as she has to try and trade with the Ari. Close range taking the double shots from the Orbit Deception, both the true and the magical damage. Some poke going down onto the banks, a nice auto attack. Poke going to both of the stun going down with the W. So quite a nice little advantage up against going forward. Sinner any bot lane as well. A lot of first damage coming out of that. A lot of unexpected damage that they might not account for. But the range should also be forced to be that she can make a lot of outplays as well with her pretty decent mobility along combined with the silver belt in her ult. And Oriana is chunk low and not as trying to drop her out. And that will probably force a back. As well as Arya is exerting quite a bit of lane dominance early on in this game. And Aurelia is does seem to be okay, but he is putting down a lot. But as soon as we say that, a lot of damage is put down in the bottom lane. And at first blood for the vein. The Sivir in a bit of a bad spot, not running away. But the Silver Salt prop does go down. And she might have to back away, having to use the health potion as well. So, as I said before, it was probably... I didn't get to see how the initiation on that fight began. But it was probably due to an Aqua Prison of the Anami. So, very well done anyways. So... A lot of a bit of a tower damage onto the Aurelia, but with Malphite and no mana, he have a little bit of trouble at this point. But a lot of damage onto the Aryan, she might not be able to, might be able to get away. The charm does land, but does go in for the flash and misses the Q. So both mid laners do not want to suggest going back, but Amumu is looking to try and get a gank off and secure the kill. Warwick waiting in the wings as well, but looks like he will just start off his red buff instead. And 
Lila able to go and aggressive goes for the tumble and completes the trifecta off of her silver bolts proc as well. And the Amumu flash in trying to get the Q and it does connect in a, in a kill for the Ari. So a bit of a risky play and might have been able to land it off, but the minions were in the way, so might have been unnecessary. But the Warwick does go in trying to get a counter gank off and get a return a revenge kill, but he will not be able to. So Warwick doesn't really have that much presence in the game until he hits that level six. And a little bit of a back and forth between the top laners. Malphite still sitting at such low mana. He not be really able to do that much. Just ability every now and then but it's, with the lane always pushing up in his favor Warwick might be able might be try to make something happen but he does not have the infinite duress just yet as he is only level four. Really it does hold the level of that she's trying to get some and I thought, trying to get some CS but she does try to go in an aggressive light of the equilibrium strike and getting a couple autos off. But she is pushed up pretty far without any wards so the Warwick does come in and she does not have any mana forcing her to pop her flash. Warwick still wants blood though. He goes in, pops the W and the Q pushing down just a little bit more but it's not enough to secure a kill for him. So the Aurelia will be forced to back and might give Malphite a chance to back to replenish his mana for mana reserve. And another close range fight between the Ari and the Oriana. Might not want to get in that close to the Ari, and the true damage tick does go off as well, but the Ari is forced really low, and she might. And he, the Oriana does secure the kill thanks to the increased auto attack damage from the wind up on her pack. So well played by the Oriana, and a Michael Prison land as well, putting a lot of damage down onto the Annie. And another auto attack from the Vein will be enough, but Annie does manage to pick off the Vein. Played by them, and a lot of damage put down on the end. She might not want to get so close. The Nami does pick up the kill, but a another kill secured by the Sivir. So a two for one in the bottom lane. But Sivir will not be able, will not feel confident with the push, wanting to go back. And I necessarily cannot blame her. She has not went back, as she is only sitting on her starter item of the Doran's Blade. Vayne now picking up the Bilge Water Cutlass, building towards that Blade of the Road King, making her an even more efficient duelist and helping with her lane sustain as well, giving her some extra life seal. And Amumu has decided to stay in the lane, try to keep the push a little bit muted, just a little bit. And Vayne will come back, and Amumu, I guess, will back off. Warwick is still level 5, not yet hitting that level 6 spike, and not even going back to the up in it. Jungler item, but a little bit of down on the Ari with the QW. Malphite seems to be okay in lane right now, picking up the chain vest and the cloth armor. Which is a little hard to want to stick. I mean, it might be a good idea to stack HP against Aurelia due to all the true damage that she's able to do. But a good stun onto the vein, and she might be looking a little low, but a nice condemn into the wall. Chain with the off of forcing the heal that runs right into the Moomoo video. Exhaust is dropping onto the Annie, and with a lot of damage coming into the vein, one more auto attack will seal the deal. And Zebra goes down as well, and Annie will not be able to get away as Vayne picks up her second kill of the game. Warwick tries to show up, still not level 6 yet, so not too much that he will be able to do, and just decides to back away. So very nice chain CC from the red team allowing the Condemned to do its full work and to do its full stun duration before throwing down the Aqua Prison. So well played in that and also having the Amumu waiting. Even though he's not level 6, the Curse of the Sadmoney would have been able to make that fight much quicker. But still well played overall. She does dive in and pops her ult trying to get some damage down and maybe force the in a way that Aqua Prison just barely lands from the Nami as we're thrown back up to the top lane. Aurelia is out of mana, but she does have a few charges on her crystalline flash, so that should make short work of that. Mari attempting to go back at an NIA team goes down to a quick We'll see. Aurelia starting to Push ahead and CS holding a 6 CS advantage, but Warwick coming around once again, finally hitting that little back so he might be able to make some good plays. Very strong games. 
Eddie now has the stun, lands the stun, he puts a little bit of damage onto the vein, but the silver takes quite a chunk out of the health bar as well. Not low on mana and not having the biscuits of rejuvenation to help it through, but the mouth not taking a lot of damage as the moon shows up. And Mouth Out will have to be forced to ult away defensively, but not enough as the moon does flash first the side of the enemy. Warwick with the flash, infinite duress combined with the shockwave. I mean, pretty nice rotation, but leaving Ari a free push in the mid. With Venus getting to crash down into the turret, they do not want to try to get, definitely get this turret, but they might need to rotate as well. Ari thinking that they might be making a dragon play as well. His decision is go down and the turret falls as well. And the dragon has been started with Ari waiting in the wings, waiting for the, uh, waiting for the Warwick to fall a little low. Trying to make a hit, but it not the teleport team does go down, and the teleport does go down, and they go in to try to make a play and secure this dragon. And the Ari dives in with the Spirit Rush. Jumps the Sivir down relatively low, and that goes down, and she does pick up the kill, and setting her sights now on the Oriana, and the charm does go down, and she forced to use the magic tech to try and get away. Try and get away. Lua does end up securing the dragon for the red team, picking up their, giving them that increased bonus to their AD and So Oriana can get out of that engage, popping all of her summoners using the barrier and the flash, pretty much all of those tools available to her just to make it out in a five-man push onto this bottom turret. Which leads the Malphite to free the point of the Malphite and the Warwick to push up top pretty much all they need to. Malphite's we can see. We will be able to make We'll be adding those players. Oh, but as we said, the Tibbers and the Shockwave goes down and catches the Bane out. So, they're not going to go open, but not a follow up. There's a lot of flashes on the top. Flashes of Ari and Ingram on the Bane. And Aurelia pops as well, and we'll bring back to the bottom. back down the bottom at Aqua Prince of Prison Landing. But walking in. The remainder of the damage with the spell shield. <laughs> and with the Mulu chunked rather low, it looks like Warwick might be able to get some good damage down onto this mid turret, but he needs to be careful for the bandage tosses. Just gonna light some auto attacks, shred their magic users, try to get some extra damage down onto him. And Malphite might be able to get this turret. He will be able to, but he will have to take a couple shots for it. But he will be okay. Yes, the Malphite does go down, so two turrets now for the blue team. Tier 1 mid low as well. It looks like they might be able to make something happen. A lot of pressure put down as they do start to open up the map. But the Aurelia jumps in onto the Malphite, forcing him to run away. And now that her Blade Surge is down, Malphite making the boots through the jungle. Make Jukes through the bushes, but he has to use his ultimate dodge away and in a nice pick on to the Annie by the Charm Aqua Prison combo. So well played by them as well. And we're now giving up the red buff. He has the mobility boots and the Trailblazer as well, giving him the smart smarts, helping him to clear through the jungle. I'll be curious to see as to whether or not he goes through the Devourer. If he was going to pick that up, he should have done that just a little bit earlier, and maybe foregoing the mobility boots and definitely going back and buying that enchantment just a little bit earlier, so he'll be able to clear just a little bit faster. And the charm does connect once again on the Ari and puts a little bit of damage onto the Oriana, deciding as to whether or not she wants to try and put some damage down onto this turret. She will decide against it, and Aurelia is now making a push onto the top tier as well. With the three man push in mid, it looks like they might be able to secure something, but with the Ari way clear, it looks like it might be just enough to dissuade them as Nami and Annie as well are rotating. Try to make this into a 4v3 though. So they might want to be careful with these battles because, because they are down a man with Vang split pushing in the bottom lane and Morelia trying to bend off the Malphite as well. So a little bit of a fight going back and forth. Very nice. That is the Wombo combo right there. 
very well played. Not only is securing the argument, but will be taken. It does take down the Aurelia in the 1v1 situation. The Mumu also does go down. So a very nice series of events for the blue team. They did pick up three kills for nothing. No kill, I mean, no deaths on their part. They might be able to make another push as well. The Aqua Prison does land, but she doesn't really have Nami being the support that she is. She does manage to keep off the Annie, though. A little bit over aggression on her part. She probably should have backed away. And now Bane dropping down as well, pops into the ult as well, ends the Oriana into the wall, and the Silver Bump pop going off as well. And not sure enough, it's not by trying to get a kill off the pops, forcing Bane to pop her heal. And Nami almost being taken down as she might have taken the second tick from the boomerang blade. It might have been enough. But just a little bit of an over aggression from the blue team, it appears. Taking what they got, but maybe just biting off a little bit more than they issue. A little bit of a play denies the bandage toss from the si I mean, denies the recall from the silver with the bandage toss. But she does spell shield it away, so she does not take the stun. Only the trap. <laughs> A little bit of lives thrown out, trying to keep it a little bit friendly-ish, a little just some disrespect. But anyways, the Risk Teller now being picked up by Ari, trying to give them a little bit more vision before the dragon comes up in 50 seconds. And with the Red Team with now holding this, holding a one dragon advantage, they do want to try and get that stacked up as much as they can, so they can get that aspect of the dragon and giving them a very strong push towards this towards their end game. But with a 4, 2, and 0, oh, Ari is relatively looking good for them. So we will have to see if it can be enough to hold them down. Malphite not having completed his mid tabby as long as long with the sheen. Looks like he might be no he will not be dead. Iceborne Gauntlet, a little bit, nice little chunk of damage onto the Nami, but she should be able to ebb and flow and heal that back up without too much of an issue. The QW does miss from the Orianna. So a little bit of a lull here, just a little bit of weight clear back and forth between the two teams. Not too much happening. I'm trying to land a banish toss onto the Annie, but it does 